Here's the second view of the triple vector product A cross B cross C. Uh, by request, I'm going to talk about uh, one way of using differential forms, in particular the wedge product and the interior product, to um, understand what's going on with this with the vector triple product, and also really to just shed more light on um, on differential forms and and their algebra. Um, it's re when I say differential forms, it's not really crucial that they, we call them differential forms because we're really not going to do calculus. We're really just doing looking at the algebra. But we're getting more into the algebra of forms here. Um, the prerequisites here are to understand uh, the basics of the algebra of differential forms, what a differential form is, the wedge product, uh, the tilde operation that I use in the intro to differential forms videos quite a bit, and a little bit about the star, or called the Hodge star operator, which I also use quite a bit um, in those videos. So in other words, uh, something that's equivalent to part through part 15, uh, at the very least, of the intro to differential forms videos, and better through part 21, or um, even through like 30 or 31, if you want to see an alternate presentation of this. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the interior product from scratch, because I want to do a more complete uh, version of that. So really, the key thing that I'm going to be talking about a lot here is the interior product. So secretly, this is really just a, an introduction to that part of the algebra of differential forms. Um, and the main thing is that the definition, or one of the ways of defining, not the only way, if alpha is a p form, a differential form of degree p, then uh, it is a machine. It's a linear machine that eats p different vectors and gives you a number, a real number. Uh, you can do it with complexes and stuff, but we're not going to do that. So the most simple example of that would be if I have a bunch of parallel lines representing alpha and it, that'd be a one form. And then the way it eats this vector v, say, is that it just counts how many levels it crosses. So one, two, three. This would be a picture of alpha of v is equal to three. Okay? So that's the one form picture. And I'll draw a, um, a two form picture in a minute to remind you how that works. But first of all, I need to tell you what the definition of the interior product is. It's really a, a very simple kind of parenthesis pushing kind of thing uh, at its most basic level. It's a way to take alpha and create a new differential form of degree p minus 1, one lower. So that should be something that eats p minus 1 vectors, which I'm going to suggestively label as 2 through p. It doesn't really matter how you label them. Um, and how on earth would I do this? Alpha is something that needs to be fed p different vectors, but I'm only feeding this guy p minus 1 vectors. Oh, wait, I can just let that u be the first vector. And by universal convention, it is the first vector that we put in there. Okay, So it's pure parenthesis pushing at this point. Um, we've created a new machine by just saying it's the old machine with one of its slots pre-filled, and you have no choice what to put in the first slot. You can now put in whatever else you, you want um, into the other slots, but the first one must be occupied by you. That gives you a machine that only has one fewer slot free. OK, so really what you could think of these videos, this, these parts of the videos, this part of the sequence as talking about is what the heck does that do for you? It does a lot, as it turns out. OK, so. Um, let me just do a few examples and make this a fairly short video, I think, before we get into the geometry. One uh, thing I have to say right, at the, right off the bat, um, a function is a differential zero form. Or in terms of the algebra, we're really just talking about a number. f would be just a number. Um, can you take the interior product of that? Well, this already has no slots at all. And one of the things about the interior product with a vector is it's decreasing the degree of the form. Well, to go from a zero form down to a minus one form, there's nothing there. And you don't just say it's not defined. You just say, hey, it's just going to be zero, no matter what u and f are. OK, always. And it turns out that's just an incredibly useful convention. OK. Um, IU of a one form, 
That's particularly nice because now there's no slots left over. It's just the number that you get when you feed alpha into u. So this is the most basic idea of forms. Just the one form is a machine that linearly eats a number, eats a vector. And we're just replicating that, OK? So it's the usual way to pair a f one form and a number and a vector, just like the picture I just showed you with the, the, the stack picture and the vector piercing the stacks. And it's just the usual pairing. So one way to think about the interior product is it's taking this pairing, which is so fundamental to the whole theory, and just kind of extending that to higher degrees. Okay, It's a way to take a vector and let it uh, modify a differential form of higher degree other than just a one form, which is like this. So in particular, this, this would connect with a present part of the presentation, the very brief presentation I did in this other video. Uh, I think it was part 30 or 31 of the intro series. Um, if I have the ith basis vector interior product into the jth dx, where these guys are associated with each other, they're dual bases to use more technical language, okay? That's just going to be, well, if, if I have dx1 eating e1, that's 1. If I have dx1 eating e2, that's 0. The picture here is like, here's dx1 with the stacks kind of going in the one in the extra in the x1 direction. Here's e1, that goes 1, here's e2, that goes 0 stacks. And so you just get 1 if i is equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j. Okay? Um, or in other words, if you know about the chronic or delta symbol, it's just delta ij. Okay. Um, one other thing that I introduced is the tilde. Remember this takes a vector uh, and if everything's like variable and stuff, it's to be a vector field. But here's just the algebra. It just takes a vector and turns it into a one form. And this, so far, I have not used any notion of geometry or perpendicularity or anything, not using the dot product. But if we have a dot product around, which we absolutely need for things like cross products and all that stuff, it's not really in the geometry, um, it just takes a vector, uh, let's say v, and turns it into v tilde, the one form version of that. Okay, the idea there is if I have a vector v, I can create something where the stacks are perpendicular. The weird thing about this is that the longer the vector is, that's a bigger vector, that should correspond to a tighter stack because tighter stacks are bigger forms. So it's not always true that this is going to pierce exactly one stack. That's the picture that's appropriate if the magnitude of v is equal to 1 if it's a unit vector. Okay, so here's v tilde. Okay, very brief review. It's just taking the vector and turning it into a one form, basically kind of in quote the same direction or, or essentially where this guy's orthogonal to these stacks. Okay, and that word orthogonal definitely shows us that we're using the geometry which comes from the dot product. Okay, well, the nice way to say this is that v tilde acting on any vector u, what should that give us? It should just measure how much does u basically go in the direction of v. Oh, hey, there's a name for that. It's called the dot product. OK, so that's a very important thing about the tilde operation. Oh, but what is this? In our new language, that's the interior product of u on v tilde. OK, so the, the interior product and the tilde combine to make the dot product. So that's going to be another important thing. Okay, um, that's a good place to stop this video, and I'll go on to two forms, some of the geometry of that, in a moment.